Hi everyone. In this video I'll show the construction and cost for building our greenhouse and hydroponic system. I made a lot of embarrassing mistakes and I plan to show all so stay tuned. And also I made a list including what we did to fix them and tips for some things we got right. Life is about learning and I hope by sharing you can avoid making some of the same mistakes. For those experienced in hydroponics, feel free to laugh. At the end I'll have a breakdown of all of our costs. In March of 2020 we built a small NFT system enclosed mosquito netting to try hydroponics and see if we could get some plants to grow. The pandemic had just started and here in the Philippines we went through many waves of various stages of lockdowns. Securing an alternate source of income that included growing food seemed like the right thing to do. I've been interested in hydroponics for many years. The area we picked did not get enough sun or airflow, so the lettuce and pachaya we grew didn't taste very good. But it did grow so we were ecstatic. Those of you here probably can remember the first time you got plants to grow in water. Hydroponics is not well known or understood by much of the general population. I think all my family and friends were amazed. I was a magician. <laughs> I could grow food without soil. I admit I was proud and thought, this is easy. Boy, was I wrong. So full of confidence, we decided to expand and build a greenhouse with an NFT system. The first mistake we made was not beginning by making a layout of what was to go inside. This would have saved us a lot of labor and material waste in cutting down rain gutter spouts into lengths that would fit into our greenhouse. The remedy was to do our best to fit what we could into the space. This leads us to the first tip. Make a complete layout that includes where to place or bury the NFT tanks. I recommend including a planting station and seedling area. Consider in your plans the location of your water source and position the greenhouse for maximum sun exposure. You can always add more shade later. Adding more sun is difficult. Okay, let's go to the greenhouse. Using bamboo as a structural element was a cost saver for us. We could get two or three posts from a 30 to 40 foot length of bamboo. It is incredibly strong and cheap compared to the expensive wood available. Using bamboo also made the greenhouse strong and heavy. We were hit by a typhoon in 2021 that tore off a few roofs in the area. Our greenhouse only had some light damage. However, our next mistake was not treating the part of the bamboo that was to be buried. Wood preservative is very expensive here, sometimes costing close to 2,000 pesos per liter. An economic alternative is to use motor oil. I was shown a fence post treated with oil that was buried in the ground three years ago and it looked fine. Unfortunately, our only remedy now is to dig up and replace the posts. Our second mistake with bamboo was to use it for the horizontal risers in the NFT system. The natural twisting and bumps in the bamboo lead to many problems. No matter how much we tried to sand and grind the bamboo to an even surface, we kept fighting leaks. Our solution was to finally replace it with cheap 2x3 lumber. The next mistake on the list was not researching the slope needed for the NFT rails. I mistakenly thought this didn't matter as long as we got the water to flow in the right direction. I noticed that my lettuce was inconsistent in size and some seedlings died right next to a plant that flourished. After investigation I discovered that the water was winding through the rail like a winding river. My slope was too steep the river completely avoided some plants. The recommended slope is two to four degrees. This is equivalent to a drop of one centimeter for every 25 to 50 centimeters in length. Our slope was nine degrees. The remedy was to fix this by raising one end. We haven't finished fixing all the beds yet, so you can see here the difference. On the left is a fixed three and a half degrees, and on the right it's nine degrees. Next mistake is more about logistics than construction. Initially we planted and grew our seedlings outside of the greenhouse before transferring into the NFT system. Unknown to us, insects were laying their eggs on the seedlings and getting a free ride into lettuce paradise inside our greenhouse. It took us a while to figure out the source of our insect problem. We spent a lot of time trying to find the hole in our mosquito netting. 
We still plant the seeds outside, but we immediately place the trays inside under the rail system for germination, and the bug problem now is gone. That brings us to something we did right. Our greenhouse is completely enclosed, and we use mosquito netting for the sides and walls. We even bury the hollow blocks next to the walls to prevent pests from digging under. This saves us a lot of money on pesticides or, in time, picking bugs off the lettuce. Back to construction. We use 2x6 lumber on the horizontal structural frame for the ends and sides. We may have been able to use much less expensive 2x4 lumber, but I think the extra weight and strength helped us survive the typhoon. Standard screen doors are my next tip. They are perfect for the application. They keep the bugs out and automatically close, which is important around here because both children and adults in my house lack door closing skills. They cost around 3,000 pesos, but well worth the expense. For the roof, we use 6 mil UV treated plastic. We spent the extra money to buy plastic roofing that is used specifically for greenhouses. The UV treatment cuts down on unneeded light in the ultraviolet spectrum. This keeps the plants a bit cooler. Going with the heavier 6 mil was also a good decision. We had many storms these last two years and it hasn't ripped anywhere. This brings us to another tip. Steel channel and wiggle wire. We use this to hold down both the plastic and mosquito netting. This stuff is great. It's well worth the cost. Instead of a single weak point of a nail or a staple, the wiggle wire in the channel clamps along the whole length of material. It's easy to install and replacing the plastic roofing will be easy. Now to where I messed up big time. I tried to save a little money on roof ribs. Using metal pipes wasn't an option due to the lockdown. I used one inch plastic pipe and it worked okay in the beginning. However, the plastic roof expands during the heat of the day and contracts at night. Now instead of nicely aligned ribs, it looks like we use flexible hose or snakes. We learned our lesson and used two inch pipe in the expansion and you can see here it works much better. A good tip before installing netting or plastic is to sand or grind down any sharp edges. The plastic will move with the wind and temperature changes. Over time sharp corners or edges will rip your material. We also covered all the hardware nuts and bolts that would touch the plastic with duct tape. Algae is a big enemy. It'll get into your system and you may find yourself like we do in a battle to control it. Algae steals both oxygen and nutrients from the water that the plants need. It also gets into the pumps and clogs the feed lines. Algae needs sun to grow. So cover anywhere the sun can shine on your water, cover the tanks, the ends of your rails, any empty unused rail holes. And every six months or so, you need to clean your rails of all the algae buildup. Another mistake we made was the size of the pipe we used to carry the water from the pump to the feeder tubes. We used half inch water pipe, but at the end of our run, the water pressure was only enough for a small drip in our last NFT rail. We measured our pump flow rate and we get between 2,500 and 3,000 liters an hour. At that rate, pressure drop for a half inch pipe is four times greater than a three quarter inch pipe. Our solution was to replace with three quarter inch and now we have good flow to all the feeder tubes. Okay, here's a list of our mistakes and fixes. Uh, if you want to pause right now and do either a picture or a screen capture, and then you can review later. Okay, well, here's a list of tips. Uh, I wanted to add one more. Uh, number seven here is make drill templates for the NFT rails, and it really is going to save you on labor. Rather than marking each rail exactly where you want to drill the hole, you can just clamp the template down and go to it. I wish we would have thought about this uh, before we were more than halfway through. And now to our greenhouse construction costs. Well, here's the list. Uh, this is based all on local pricing and uh, you may be able to save a lot of money if you have a source of bamboo, for example, uh, or that you can get better prices on lumber where you live. Uh, it's very expensive here. Uh, so 
anyway, uh, it looks like about uh, 3,000 US, 148,000 pesos. I did divide it into Greenhouse 1 and Greenhouse 2 because we did an expansion about halfway through last year. And finally, our NFT construction cost, uh, a little over $2,000 US. Uh, I did not include the side bed that we grow uh, vegetables for local and family uh, because it's not really an NFT. We plan to expand uh, as soon as we get some a little extra money and convert that into an F NFT system. But here's the total cost, and that's including all 2,880 holes, about 720 lettuce a week, uh, theoretically. Hey, a big thank you to all of you that stayed and watched to the end. I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe. And take care. God bless. See you next time.